Well, this is a surprise. Over 100 games in and we finally reached the first NES game made specifically for the Western market, and only the Western market, as it was never released in Japan. Gumshoe. Why wasn't this game released in Japan? Because it's a Zapper game. Remember the Zapper? The peripheral that had three of the earliest games released for the system? Wild Gunman? Duck Hunt? And Hogan's Alley. After that though, the peripheral was phased out, probably because the Zapper was made more to appeal to Westerners, because who doesn't like guns more than Murica? And also Europe, I guess. However, there's a huge difference between the Zapper trilogy and Gumshoe. Gumshoe is a game with a much larger end goal than Don't Screw Up. It's essentially a platformer, but you use a gun instead of a standard controller. Ex-FBI agent, now detective, Mr. Stevenson finds a ransom note saying his daughter has been kidnapped by the notorious King Don. Oh, I'm sorry, Dom. So what he wants in return are five of the Black Panther diamonds, which are jewels so valuable, so sought over, that they're just lying in the middle of the road or in the sky. Huh. So, let's get this out of the way right now. Gumshoe is a weird game. Like, mind-altering drug weird. And I know, saying something is like they took drugs is a lame statement nowadays. Whoa! Mario lives in a crazy world because he's literally on mushrooms! <laughs> but at least series like Mario and Kirby live in their own cartoon universe of weirdness, rather than this game where the FBI exists and Stevenson's daughter is probably going to be killed if he doesn't complete his mission. In this same world, balloons are filled with bullets and squares with skulls on them kill you if you touch them. It's pretty weird. This game even starts fittingly. It begins with a serious message with some serious music. And then when the game starts, it goes right into goofy cartoon music. Now let's get into how you play this game. Mr. Stevenson is always moving, never stopping. So to keep the detective from killing himself, you need to guide him using the zapper by shooting him to jump. Did anyone at Nintendo see how wrong this kind of looks? Thankfully doing this won't kill the old man, but shooting at random bottles and cars out of nowhere will. But to shoot, you need bullets, which as I said before are stored in these balloons floating everywhere. But also everywhere are these insta-death skull blocks that look straight out of AVGN adventures. Is this where they got it from? But the weirdness doesn't stop there. It even leaks into the level structure. So there's this one part of the level, right? You can either go high or low. Going low means you have to face the bottles and cars that come flying at you. So naturally, you choose high. But if you choose high, you'll end up playing a longer version of the level where you walk through the desert and eventually find one of the Black Panthers. Or you can just take the low road, deal with a few obstacles, and collect the diamonds in seconds. Why is it designed like this? Well, this game has a time limit. If you don't collect all the diamonds in 24 in-game hours, the game is over. Or more likely, the game will be over because this game is so damn hard. Why does there need to be death blocks all over the level? The part where I almost gave up is right here where you need to shoot at the right time to make Stevenson jump correctly. Oh, but watch out for those random bottles. And then there's this part with all these birds where you're just constantly shooting them to keep yourself safe, but you also need to keep yourself in the air, and the screen ends up being a freaking seizure inducer. Some of these birds give you power-ups like this power drink that'll change the color of your trench coat but also let you take another hit. But good luck actually catching it. Yeah, it's strange, you need to actually catch these power-ups or they'll fly off screen. Why not to the platform below? So you can just collect it? Is that too hard? Man, these death blocks are everywhere. What were they thinking when they designed this game? Wait, what? Some of the blocks are okay to jump on? And now they're suddenly huge? Oh, how cute. The blocks get smaller. Were they just taking the piss with this game? Apparently this game was made by the Nintendo R&D 1 section of Nintendo. Most notably the faction of Nintendo run by Gunpei Yokoi, the inventor of the Game & Watch and Game Boy, and was directed by Yoshio Sakamoto, who joined Nintendo as an artist and worked on previous games we covered like Balloon Fight and Wrecking Crew, with Gumshoe being his first directorial job. Yokoi wanted to make a zapper game, so Sakamoto came up with this idea of a ball that jumped when you shot at it, and eventually fleshed it out into the insanity that we have now. Sakamoto even made Stevenson look like Yokoi, and Yokoi's response was, What have you done here? Although I can't even make the comparison, they look nothing alike. 
Second model still works at Nintendo as involved a lot with the Metroid, Wario, Rhythm Heaven, and Tamodachi series is... is. The reason the original Zapper games were so engaging was their simple pick-up-and-play gameplay where they try to simulate something you'd actually do with a gun. Shooting cowboys, hunting ducks, testing at a firing range, it makes sense. Gumshoe, on the other hand, tries to make a game be more than it should with such a limited way on how to play it. If people wanted to play a game with an ending, they'd rather use a controller, you get me? And what makes it even worse is how the zappers aren't exactly the most state-of-the-art anymore. A lot of them have flaws that have deteriorated over time. So is playing a game that requires precise inputs to jump and dodge obstacles worth it when your controller's faulty? No? No, not really. And speaking of precise inputs, I mentioned that this game can get hard. Of course I'm playing this on an emulator, so a few of the difficult moments can be curved. But just imagine playing this authentically on a television screen where the game will require quicker reflexes and pixel-perfect shots to register every time it makes this a questionable recommendation, which I can't really. Sure, there are some polished elements of this game, but everything else just feels so questionable to complete. But hey, if you want to play a game where you shoot a guy to jump and everything feels like a drug trip, go have fun.